a model steamboat named Edith. This is part 26, the water tank bypass valve and the gas burner mounting. In this clip I'm examining the condition of the paint on the water tank because as an experiment, once I painted this brass water tank, I just left it on the bench and it's had tools on top of it and it's been scratched and it's been in and out of the boat. But when I examine the tank, it's only the black paint that's come off. The etch primer is firmly stuck to the brass. And what is this etch primer? If you haven't watched the rest of the series, you won't know. It's Precision Paints Single Pack Etch Primer, and I followed the instructions. After preparing the brass and scouring the surface thoroughly, I sprayed a coat of etch primer on very thinly. Then I waited over 24 hours before I put the black paint coat on. I tried to figure out where the best place to put the water bypass valve would be, and then it became very obvious. All I need to do is fit a globe valve to the water bypass return on the tank. Nothing difficult here, I just need to make an adapter. This is a piece of brass hexagon in my Boxford lathe, and I've drilled it down the centre tapping size for 5 16 by 32, and for ME thread tapping sizes I generally use an imperial drill size which is two imperial drill sizes less than the 5 16 so that is 9 30 seconds of an inch. If you're an experienced engineer watching this, then don't worry about it. This is designed for beginners, and besides which it's the way I've always done it. I think I first read about it in Model Engineer many, many years ago. I think it was a method that LBSC recommended. This two imperial sizes down for the tapping size drill works with ME threads and BA sizes. It does not work with every type of thread. I assume that if you're watching this you have a computer, so all you need to do is go onto Google and type into the search box tapping sizes for ME threads. I've turned the part round in the chuck now and I'm just machining the other end. It's just to make it look a little bit fancier. I didn't bother changing the tool in the tool post, I'm just using the parting tool. And eventually I get a brass hexagon adapter that looks like this. So the first thing to do is to screw it fairly tightly to the tank and then apply some retainer to the threads on the globe valve and screw the globe valve into the adapter but immediately remove the adapter from the tank. And this is so that any surplus Loctite does not retain the fitting to the tank. That's because I will need to remove the globe valve in order to fit the tank into the boat. By way of some sort of an interlude I thought it would fit the drain elbow to the condenser. I need the pipe to exit at 90 degrees. The first thing to do is to thread the hole properly because initially I just made a pilot thread in here. The tool that I'm using to rotate the tap I've had for many years and it's very useful. It's just like a socket driver, except that it has a square hole in the centre of it. And the size of this hole only works with 5 16 by 32 threads per inch taps. So once you've wound the tap into the work, you turn the tool over to unwind it. By the way, I only use this on 5 16 by 32 taps because those are the only ones that fit and I only ever use it on brass because with the ratchet system you cannot back off, so it wouldn't be very good for steel. Once I'd threaded the hole, I fitted the 90 degree elbow using my Barco spanner with some Loctite 542 on the threads to make sure it doesn't leak. This next part about mounting the burner came to me out of the blue. I'd been thinking for a while, what's the best way to mount this burner in the boat? I was going to fit a flat plate under the boiler, but instead I came up with this idea. This is a small piece of brass sheet that I found in my box full of small pieces of brass sheet, and so using a pencil I marked out the positions for the hole, over to the drilling machine, first of all with a centre drill, and as you see here with a twist drill I drill the holes. And the holes I've drilled are one eighth of an inch in diameter. This is tapping size for 4BA. So now in this clip I'm transferring the hole positions from the brass sheet onto the burner mounting block. Then once again with a centre drill followed by a 1 8 twist drill I drill the holes and here I'm threading the holes 4BA. First one hole, then I turned it over and threaded the other one. And the logic of operation is that the two holes in the piece of sheet metal were drilled 1 8 of an inch in diameter and that allowed me to accurately transfer the position of the holes onto the brass block, so there will not be any errors when I put it all together. But what I will have to do is drill out the holes in the brass sheet, the thin bit, to 9 64 This is clearance size for 4BA. 
So all that remains to be done now is to assemble the unit. I'm temporarily using some cheese head bolts that I have, or screws, whatever you want to call them. So the piece of brass sheet fits to the burner mounting block fairly well. I didn't have to drill out any of the holes, I didn't have to file any of the holes. This is just as it was made. Once I knew that the parts fitted together well, I took the piece of brass sheet to the drilling machine and countersunk the two holes in the brass sheet. And then I assembled the unit with countersunk bolts because this part has to sit up against the water tank. And here you see the principle. I haven't cut the brass sheet to length yet because I don't know how high the burner needs to sit on the brass tank to allow it to be exactly in line with the centre flue of the boiler. I have a choice here, I could just bend over the top like a hook so that it hooks onto the tank. Or I may just use a couple of bolts at the top because really once the burner's in position it does not need to be moved. Here are the parts from this episode. The tank that just needs a little bit of painting to make it look like new again. The water bypass valve is in position and the very simple gas burner mounting is in place. So here's the principle. This is the gas canister and this sits in the water tank which has water in it but not sufficient water to make the gas tank float upwards because don't forget the gas tank will be held in position by the gas pipe. The gas tank as you can see is very easy to remove and replace. And as a bonus by mounting the burner to the actual water tank some heat is going to be conducted into the water tank itself and that is beneficial because it will stop the gas canister from chilling and the usual problem of gas pressure drop owing to the gas canister chilling will be alleviated. Simple but effective, just the way I like it. And that's about it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.